Hi, this is Ali and today I am your guide in this hardcore Portuguese grammar lesson. I am a Portuguese teacher and I am the Portuguese teacher behind the website PortugueseWithAli.com. You can always visit my website and see many uh, grammar articles and lessons there if you are studying Portuguese. If you're not, visit too. You're welcome. And today, after watching this lesson, you will understand how to use part of the object pronouns that we have in Portuguese. Right now, what the heck? Oh, 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 not so fast. What are object pronouns? First, let's take a look at those two English sentences here. I see an airplane from here. Can you see it too? No, I can't see it. Can you show me where it is? Then, you have an airplane, and I see an airplane. Just imagine, the airplane is a noun, and see is the action. The action is referring to the noun, right? I see an airplane. When I replace this noun with a pronoun, I have to use an object pronoun. And it's the object because it's the victim of the verb. Every verb is a murder, and we have to remember that. It kills nouns and pronouns as well. It needs a pronoun. Hmm? Sometimes, not always. <laughs> and here, the object pronouns is it, and we also have this here too, it. And we also have an object pronoun here, me. But in this case, me is not an airplane. I hope it isn't. And me is I, actually. It's replacing I. And we usually have to replace it because we don't say, can you show I? No. And you cannot say, me can't see it. Uh, unless you're Tarzan. In this case, I think you have the right to do that. Okay? And what are the Portuguese object pronouns? Well, we have many of them. And it's like, if you take the time to memorize all of them, congratulations. Even Brazilians don't do that. But we have here three columns, one with the personal pronoun, pronoun, and two of them with the corresponding uh, direct and indirect object pronouns. Today we are going to focus on the second column here, with this me, o, a, lo, la, no, na, nos, o, a, los, las, y nos, nas. You don't really have to memorize everything because by sheer repetition people use that, people write that, you have to learn them even if you don't want it. You just want to memorize that this corresponds to this and this corresponds to this. We're not going to make any mnemonic or some trick to memorize everything right now because you can pause the video. Hey, take advantage of that feature, right? Modernity helps us. Now, take a look also because we have this agente here. What, what does it mean? Keep an eye out for it. You'll see something in the future. But now, let's take a look at the second column or the direct object pronouns. And as I said, imagine that the verb is a murder. I think this analogy is not so good, but it sticks. So, uh, the verb is a murder and it needs to kill something. And the something that it kills is a pronoun or a noun. When it kills directly, that is, without any strategy or without any preposition, it's a direct uh, object pronoun or it's a uh, victim is a direct object pronoun, which is better to say. You'll see here that um, we have many of those sentences here. Uh, for example, in this case, ele me viu ontem, this is me, it's replacing I. Hmm? Você pode me esperar aqui? Onde você vai nos encontrar? Ela não nos viu na loja. And you can see here in the English translations that we have us, us, me, me. It's kind of similar to. And those are the object pronouns. Usually, they come before the verb that it is going to refer to. Ele me viu. Você pode me esperar. Onde você vai nos encontrar? Ela não nos viu na loja. And there's some magic trick here because, Jan, you remember that I talked about a gente? A gente is a pronoun in Portuguese too. And it's also an object pronoun. It's a subject pronoun and an object pronoun. Crazy, right? That's life. And as an object pronoun, it goes after the verb because it's very strong. You can't really say você vai a gente encontrar. That's uh, uh, not good. And você vai encontrar a gente is how we would say it. A gente, just for you to know, it's replacing us, we, nós. Hmm? In Portuguese. You here you see the translation keeps it. 
And você vai encontrar gente? Ela não viu a gente na loja. And here in Brazil, it's much more common in speech, an everyday conversation, than in writing. In writing, it's considered not so good, but you can say that all the time, and you can also write that when you're talking with friends through WhatsApp or something like that. It's not a problem, okay? And now we have different object pronouns because you saw that was a very big column. And we have those four sentences here. Você viu os meninos ontem? Os meninos? This is the noun. Ainda não li esse livro. É bom? Esse livro is the noun. Eu sempre vejo a Paula e a Tiane na rua. A Paula e a Tiane, that's the group of nouns. Eu compro os livros depois. Os livros, noun, as well. And with the magic of the computer science, pram, it becomes, você os viu ontem? That's referring to the boys. Você os viu, and see the placement here, before the verb? Hmm? Ainda não o li. Oops. And with a little bit more of magic, tada, I got rid of that mistake. <laughs> that was a giant typo. So, ainda não li, I haven't read it yet. And o refers to the book, o livro. É bom? Eu sempre as vejo na rua. Who? As vejo a Tiane e a Paula. Eu os compro depois. O que você compra depois? Os livros. Eu os compro depois. And you see again, the placement is always before the noun, the verb, not after the verb. But sometimes you need to put those object pronouns after. When? Well, if you're learning Brazilian Portuguese and talking to Brazilians, probably you have seen that and spoken Portuguese. Actually, I have heard that. We use the personal pronouns as object pronouns in daily conversation. So instead of saying, você os viu, you would say, você viu eles. And eles is referring to the boys. Ainda não li ele. And ele is referring to the book. Eu sempre vejo elas, Paulo e Tiane, e eu compro eles depois, the books. Here, you will use that in spoken Portuguese. Mostly in spoken Portuguese, I can say only in spoken Portuguese, but nowadays I see many people writing like the talk, that's not a problem always, and but if you are preparing for a CLP Brás or some other proficiency test, you will not want to use that um, in writing too, only in speaking, okay? Now, um, let's take a look at some more. It's, the, it's a different uh, situation. You see here that eu vou comprar os livros mais tarde, we have the infinitive here. Mm, how does it change? Eu, ela quer ver o Paulo ainda hoje. Eu preciso encontrar minha professora agora. Eu posso mexer minhas pernas. And then, tcharam, eu vou comprá-los. Ela quer vê-lo. Eu preciso encontrá-la. Eu posso mexê-las. And what's the rule here? Whenever you have two verbs, quer ver, vou encontrar, preciso ver, tá, 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 tá. You need to put the person, uh, the, the, the object pronoun, uh, the direct object pronoun, but you should link that. In Spanish, you would say comprarlos, right? You would keep the R, but in Portuguese, you drop the R and insert an, uh, this little accent here. So this is the accent agudo for verbs in A, accent agudo for verbs in E, accent circunflexo or the little hat, and we'll see something different now. But before, eu preciso encontrá-la, eu posso mexê-las, eu vou comprá-los. In spoken Portuguese, this is also used, but not so commonly. We would say something different. And before I forget, there's something that Brazilians make all the time, a kind of mistake, uh, when writing, not when speaking. Uh, for example, eu posso reduzir os custos, and they include the accent, eu posso reduzi-los thinking that they need that. Actually, you don't need that with verbs ending in IR. Eu posso reduzi-los. Okay? So, with verbs in AR, you would need the accent. With verbs in ending in ER, would, you would need the accent. But verbs ending in IR, you wouldn't need the accent in this situation. And you might ask the question, but can I put the pronoun before the verb? Well, in literary Portuguese, you can't. 
don't tell anybody that I told you that, but you can do that. However, in everyday conversation and in everyday writing too, you could put that.、Uh, you could actually.、Uh, you you have to, not you could. You have to use that after the infinitive, because you could write something like "eu posso reduzir," and that's going to show up somewhere here in the screen. Eu os posso reduzir, and that would be perfect Portuguese. But eu posso reduzi-los is a much more common construction.、Hmm? And now, bang, some more. Eu vou comprar os livros mais tarde. Ela quer ver o Paulo ainda hoje. Eu preciso encontrar minha professora agora. Eu posso mexer minhas pernas. The same sentence that we just、uh, saw, but now with a twist, because chan again. You can use the ele, ela, eles, elas to replace the pronouns or to replace the nouns, because in everyday conversation, that's how we speak. Eu vou comprar eles mais tarde. More correctly, eu vou comprá-los. More colloquially, eu vou comprar eles.、Hmm? So each one of those forms here, they are very colloquial, they are very natural, and that's how Brazilians would speak every in everyday conversation. Sometimes they would use the other ones, but this is more common. And now, pan, quick twist. Eles compraram a cerveja. As crianças fizeram dever de casa. Here, no translations. They bought the beer, and the children did their homework, or did the homework actually. And you see here that we have a different sound. M compraram, fizeram. And when you use a pronoun here to substitute or to replace the noun a cerveja de vez de casa, you could put that before the verb, but in this situation you could also put after the verb in writing, and you would need or in speaking too. In you would speak, you would need to include the n to facilitate the pronunciation. Eles compraram na, as crianças fizeram no, referring to the beer and the homework, but it's only in written Portuguese. People really don't speak like that. If they do, people, other people might、uh, look at them in funny ways, like "What's that?" Okay, so it's used only in spoken Portuguese. And right now, I would like to ask you: Do you want to learn some more? In the next session, we'll take a look at the indirect objects or indirect object pronouns, which is better to say,、uh, because it would be too long if I were to explain both. And before I forget. If you want to learn some more grammar, but in a way that's going to last, it's going to stay with you for a long, long time,、uh, as some of my friends say,、uh, stay the, the distance, right? You can download a free guide to learning the verb and verb tenses in Portuguese, because that's also another giant brick,、uh, and that's a, a Portuguese saying actually, a pedra no sapato, or a stone in a shoe. I don't, I don't want those verbs to be. So you can head over to intermediateportuguese.com/verbs and see that it's not written correctly. You just let's do let's do some magic. Aha! And the magic worked. So head over to www.intermediateportuguese.com/verbs and grab your free report right now to speak with more confidence. And I hope to see you soon here in the next session. Bye.